You've now got a platform class, which is a static game object on the stage. In this video, we will define a hero object using a similar approach. The hero is a character that is controlled by the player. However, you'll probably find that the hero object is something that moves instead of being placed statically on stage. What makes a hero different from the platform is the ability to move. The hero will be able to run on platforms, jump up and fall due to gravity. While developing a game, you could have other movable objects that can move around and are affected by gravity as well. To make something movable, you'll need logic for things like velocity, jumping, falling with gravity. Movable objects share these characteristics, but they're seldom part of the static game object. You can easily define a movable object, that is, a type of our static game object, with extra code to make it movable. Let's see how. You'll first need a movable class. Let's create it. And we'll have a dedicated file named rush-movable-gameobjects.js for it. Inside the file, define the class to be inherited from game object. We'll use the same approach to inheritance that creates a new game object instance with the prototype property and executes the super initialize method. Let's put the movable code here later when we handle the moving logic. For now, define your hero class to be inherited from this movable game object. Similarly, we have another file named rush-hero.js for logic dedicated to the hero, and a similar class definition that inherits the movable game object class. Set the category property to the string hero, and then set the dimension to 10 by 16. You'll also have to represent the hero visually, so draw a rectangle shape with fill color green. We then need this hero to stand on the platform. It will be difficult to calculate the position when the hero moves because by default the reference point of the position is placed to the top left position on the screen. You'll need to take the width and height into calculation if the reference point is at that corner. We'll configure the center point at the bottom as a reference point. The bottom point allows you to get rid of height in future calculations. The center point makes it easy for us to have equal calculation on both the left and right side. Then add the hero to the stage to see how your code works. Let's switch to rush-game.js and create a hero that stands on the platform with the Y position, which is the same as the platforms. Before testing your code in a browser, Make sure that you include the newly created JS files in the index.html document, otherwise the browser will not load your new code. Now save your files and open the game in a browser, and you should see a green hero standing on the black platform. We've taken the game object class and ended with a movable game object and hero class definition. You'll now be able to create both static and movable objects. In the next video, we're going to put the platforms together and make the game ready for playing.